Number 1. Anunshag. Under 10 kilometers east of the center of Vesteros is Sweden's largest barrow, burial mound. This is 9 meters in height and 64 meters across and dates back at least 1,500 years. It is claimed to be the resting place of the semi-legendary King Brotnund from the House of Ingling. The earliest evidence of human activity at this site on the Badalunda Ridge goes back further, to around 2500 BC, and people gathered here for things and spiritual ceremonies right up to medieval times. Number 2. Vesteros Cathedral. The city's cathedral was consecrated in the 1200s, and there have been all sorts of extensions and restorations since then. The most recent was in 1958-61, but there's no shortage of sumptuous art and architecture from the Middle Ages and Renaissance. The altar sets are exquisite and were crafted in Lübeck, capital of the Hanseatic League, in the 15th century. Number 3. Volby Open Air Museum. This attraction has gathered up to 40 traditional buildings from around Vastmanland County and brought them here piece by piece. Among the sites is a manor house, copper works, a whole town square, blacksmith, village school and Christian Mission Hall. Each of the buildings have actors to paint a picture of daily life in old times, and there are also skilled tradesmen demonstrating traditional crafts. Number 4. Kungsvin Animal Park. Highly recommended if you're in Vesteros with younger members of the family, the Kungsbin Animal Park is a small but well-run zoo. There are both exotic and domestic animals here, and lots of opportunities for little ones to interact. They can go on pony rides, meet goats and sheep, and watch the moose being fed. The animal park also has a terrarium, with snakes and iguanas, and braver kids will be able to touch and handle them. Number 5. Cockpunkton Action Bad. Cockpunkton is eight floors of slides and pools in the confines of a former steam power station on the east side of the city. The monolithic building, celebrating its centenary in 2017, is a popular fixture in Vesteros cityscape, right on the shore of Lake Mellorin. The plant was shut down in 1992 and in the 2000s it was slowly reworked into this unique attraction. Number 6. Engso Castle. The lowest floors are medieval, dating to the 15th century. In the 18th century the upper floors were reworked into a genteel Rococo style by the architect Karl Harlman. The castle is owned by a foundation that opens it to visitors in summer, allowing you to tour the sublime 18th century interiors. Number 7. Stromsholm Palace. The royal family frequented Stromsholm in the first decades of the 19th century, after which it became the riding and driving academy for the Swedish army for the next 100 years. The palace went up in the 16th century, and its current Baroque facade was composed in 1681. The Gustavian interiors are a little newer and date to the middle of the 1770s, and are just as they were when the likes of Karl XIV Johan would holiday here. Number 8. Kirkbacken. The sweetest old district in Vesteros is around the Rydbeckianska Gymnasiet, roughly, the Rydbeckian Grammar School, in the north parts of the town centre. In a warren of alleys there are one- and two-storey houses in what was the city's humbler neighbourhood. The clerical elite and bourgeois lived in the southern quarters, while this was a slum up to the mid-20th century. Number 9. Vastmanlands County Museum. At Karlsgatten II in the center of Vesteros is a museum that spells out the history and culture of the wider Vastmanland County. One of the exhibits you need to see is a treasure discovered in ancient graves at Badalunda just outside the city. Dating from around the 3rd century AD, it's the largest hoard of gold ever found in a woman's grave, and is made up of bracelets, rings, and necklaces. Number 10. Botaniska Tradgarden. The oldest garden in Sweden to be planted specifically for botany students, at the Rydbeckianska Gymnasiet, is in a prime location just next to the cathedral. A protege of the great taxonomist Carl Linnaeus established this carefully ordered garden in the mid-18th century, and the species are all labeled with their scientific names according to the system Linnaeus invented. Hope you like this video. For more videos please subscribe to our channel.